Let's talk about a very important classification in the context of GDP, the real versus nominal GDP. Let me ask you a question. This GDP growth number that we keep hearing about India, let's say over the last decade India's GDP growth would have been about 6 to 7 percent. This GDP growth number, is this real or is this nominal? Right? Think about it. It's also important for us to understand what is the relevance of having two of these data points. So let's try and understand that in this video. The GDP can be expressed in terms of nominal or real context. The nominal data is expressed in terms of the current price. So when I take the output and multiply it with the present price, current price, the value I get is the nominal output of the country. Real data on the other hand assumes a fixed price regime and takes that constant price and multiplies the output with that. It removes or strips out the effect of inflation from the data. But why is that needed? Why is that necessary? To understand that, let's assume a hypothetical country which produces only one good, right? Let's assume it produces steel, right? And we look at data of this country that is producing this from the years 2010 to 2015. We have the volume available. Let's say the volume is in terms of kg and the price is in terms of rupees per kg, right? So that's data that is available with us. When you multiply the volume with the price, right? Column two and column three, when you multiply, what you get is the output of the country. That's your GDP value. Now, I would want you to pay attention to the years 2012 and 13, right? Look at the change in output. 2940 moves to 3328. That's a growth rate of 13.2%, right? That's a healthy growth rate. But when you look closely, what has happened is the actual output in volume terms has gone down. Now, because you're looking at gross domestic product, production or output, this can't be good, right? If the country's population is growing, you're producing lesser steel or whatever commodity this is per capita. And that's not a growth scenario. What you realize is the growth is being driven by the change in price. The change in price almost completely overtakes the movement in the output and that supersedes this. That creates a scenario where it is assumed that nominal GDP seems to be doing well, GDP is growing well, but technically this is distorting the actual output. Imagine doing this for a country that produces crude oil, right? One of the years the price is $100, next year the price is $60, the year after that the price is $120. Your nominal GDP number will be all over the place. And it may not give you a very good understanding of where is the country really headed. So in these scenarios, you want to remove this impact of the pricing, right? What can you do? One of the things you can do is you can just directly compare the output. So 100 going to 103 is a 3% movement. 103 going to 105 is a two, approximately a 2% movement. That is the change in output and that would be your real growth number, right? So effectively, if I was to look at the change in output, that would be my real growth number. And you'll realize that between 2012 and 13, your real output is minus 1%, correct? You can also do something called as fixing the price, right? And I'll come to why do we fix the price in a minute, but let's say you fix the price at the first year itself. So you multiply the output of each year with the price of the first year to get the real output. And then you can find the difference there as well. And the growth numbers could come out of that. This would give you a better estimate of what's happening with the output of the country, right? But it's important to understand why we fix the price. We didn't need to do this step in a single commodity or a single product economy. But what if there are multiple products? Let's say there's an economy that produces laptops and let's say water bottles, right? And in the first year it produces 100 laptops and 100 water bottles. In the second year it produces 103 laptops and 105 water bottles. So the output of laptops has grown by 3% and the output for water bottles has grown by 5%. What is the actual output growth? How do I find the real growth here? You'll realize that if I take a simple average that tends to distort things because the actual value of these products is very different, I would want to take a weighted average. For a weighted average, I would need to introduce the price. Recall that 
change in price or inflation was the problem for us. Price itself is not a problem. So if I fix the price, if I can fix the price, then that solves the problem. Let's assume a laptop was worth 50,000 and a water bottle was worth 50 rupees. If I fix the price in both the cases, this is GDP for year one, this is GDP for year two. Once I fix the price, the difference is my real GDP growth. That is how you calculate real GDP growth. The year in which we fix the price is known as the base year. It's important to understand this because this is the year where you're basically taking the output prices at and you're multiplying each year's output with the price in that year to arrive at an estimate of what is going to be the real GDP, right? Complications aside, a very simple thing to understand is that real GDP gives you the actual picture in terms of what is the output growth in an economy. Nominal can get distorted sometimes in terms of prices, right? Also, remember, effectively, if you look at, let's say, the first couple of years and you look at this data point here, the real growth is 3%. The price change is about 4%, approximately real plus inflation, approximately real plus inflation should give you the nominal growth data. Now in India, if you think about it, inflation over the last decade would have been about 4 to 5%. Real GDP growth has been about 6 to 7%. That would give a nominal GDP growth of about 10 to 12% over the last decade. The number you keep hearing about India's economy size is basically the absolute GDP data, but the growth number that you read about is always real GDP growth. So that's what is to be covered under real and nominal GDP. We understand the importance and relevance of real GDP growth because this gives you the actual output growth in the economy and that is what drives the rest of the stuff in the economy. So that's all about real and nominal GDP.